Thank you so much. And we're off. Everything you wanted to know about dogs um, and include in your sketch. So, when, uh, when we say dogs, we've got all of our crazy home pets and these come in all sorts of shapes or sizes. This is due to selective breeding by humans. We have turned something that basically looked like a wolf into all of this crazy stuff. So the, it turns out that the ones that are the best for, um, for learning dog anatomy are the ones with really short hair. And the ones that help you best in sort of drawing wild dogs are ones with kind of longer hair. But when you get to something crazy like this or like this, um, it's a... Uh, we probably want to look at a, at, at a different subject. So we have done everything to the basic dog form. Um, but we all, they all kind of started from uh, a, a, an ancestral stock that human beings selectively bred. It is really amazing to see the variety that we have, have created. But let's start with this wonderful uh, muscular Doberman here. And what I want people to notice about this is that I sort of have a, uh, a, a box of a body here. The front leg comes down from not the very front corner, but just back a little bit. And look at how straight down that front leg comes. The front legs are basically posts. The back leg is bent. And we'll be looking at the anatomy of this in just a moment. It has hips here, a knee here, so there's a joint. Here's its heel, and this part here is, if, is its foot. It's walking around on its toes. So the back leg has knee, heel, and toes. So when you, uh, what you're usually going to see sticking out from the bottom of, of the dog you sometimes are going to see in a short haired one, you'll see the knee and the heel. If there's a lot of long hair in here, it'll, you'll just sort of see this part sticking down, going back to the heel and down to the toes. Right? Um, notice that there's a mass of muscles up in this area and a mass of muscles up in this area. We're going to want to get a suggestion of those in our sketch. Also, here, on the head, I'm noticing a little groove right here. And we'll be talking more about that in just a moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bounce over to the, um, my little document camera here. And I'm going to go with work with this worksheet that I uh, uh, have online for folks. This is a skeleton of a gray wolf. And what I'm gonna do is quickly show you a few of the major muscles that are going to pop up. And you'll see these muscles on short haired dogs. Um, you won't see them, you'll see them just as sort of a general bump, but you won't see all the ripples in something like a wolf. So, Let's see here. I'm gonna click down one time to zoom on this, all right? And I'm gonna show you, we're gonna draw in a few muscles on this, this wolf, on the front leg, the back leg, and the body. Um, so here we go. We're going to start with um, a muscle that's going to come from the back edge of the shoulder blade, and it's going to go right to the elbow. So this is shoulder, elbow, wrist, right? This whole area here in dogs, cats, and horses, is taken up by a big trapezius muscle. So this, not trapezius muscle, sorry. Um, the, it's a three-headed muscle, um, the triceps. I was thinking tri. Um, so here's your big triceps. And that fills up most of the space between the shoulder blade and the elbow here. So that also makes this part of the, the body really boxy. 
Now in the cats, we got into the deltoids, we got into a lot of other little uh, muscles around here, but we're not gonna do that with the dogs. For the dogs, this, this, this thing just sort of making this part of the, the arm big enough, that's gonna be all we need to do for, for this. Again, if you want to get into some more muscles, go check out the cat video. Let's go over here to the back leg. For the dogs, the upper part of the leg, so this bone right here is your femur, there's the kneecap, so hip, knee, heel. Um, this part of the leg in the front and the back has a big mass of muscles on it. So if you are, are interested, you're gonna, from an area up in here down to here, that is where the quadriceps muscle, your thigh muscle, connects in, and we're gonna make a great big bump here. And then we are going to do, go from the back point of the hips here. We're going to have a muscle that comes down to the knee, and it's also gonna fan out along part of the shin here. Down below in the lower legs, there are two um, muscles that we want to pay attention to. Um, one is going to be a muscle that is going to come from up in here on our um, humerus, and it's gonna connect to down here on the hand part of the, the dog's foot. So these are the carpal bones. And so there's going to be a muscle that's gonna be diagonal in here and it's gonna attach with a little tendon down to there. Meanwhile, on the back leg, I'm gonna go for one last muscle that's gonna go from the back edge of the bone that goes from the hips to the knee. That bone again is your your femur, and it's gonna to go to the heel. So that, I'm gonna draw it in as a narrow triangle. Towards this end, it comes out to a very skinny little tendon, the Achilles tendon right in there. So in the front, I have a big box. Sorry, that's in the back. <laughs> in the back, I have a big box. It's then going- You're off screen. Oh, is that better? So narrower to here and even narrower here. So big, medium sized, little. In the front, I'm going from big up here to medium sized to little. I'm gonna add one more muscle onto the wolf here. And this is one that's gonna go from the back of the skull, and it's going to connect into the forearm bone, this one right here, the humerus. And that's going to cut diagonally down like this. It's a big muscle right in this area. And that's, we're gonna see a little hint of that kind of showing up. So you notice that we're not getting into the deltoids, we're not getting into a lot of the other muscles that we had before. I have added in one new one since the cat video. But on um, this little wolf here, essentially what I'm saying is you are going from big to medium to small. And up here, you're going from big to medium to small. And if you have those blocked in, those are, that's your, those are your kind of most critical major muscle groups that you're gonna to want to understand about your dog.
Jack, can you slide the picture just up a little bit so we could see the smaller? Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's jump over to keynote again. And here we are back with our friend, the Doberman, all right? And what you're seeing here is big, next section, medium. And here's where that Achilles tendon comes in. There's a little divot here in the leg to small. Up here in this leg, this big mass here, that's where your triceps is. Big, medium, notice slightly tapering to here, and then small. And then the toes are on the ground. All right. Front leg straight, back leg is bent. Now, when we put just a little bit of denser fur on top of this, you notice that we're not seeing you know, that much individual muscle, muscle, muscle definition, but um, you can see there is a big mass in here. So here's actually, you're seeing the shoulder blade. This is the triceps area all through here, right? The hips of this critter are here. Here's where the quadriceps are. And then, Notice this is coming down in a cone to here. This is coming down in a cone to here. Jack, there's a question about whether it's a brachiocephalus like it's in cats. Yes, yes it is. That's a great question. Yes, it is. So um, these, um, the, all the carnivores are going to keep the same, um, the same names uh, for those, those muscles. All right. Now notice here on the leg, I can see this divot because the hair here is shorter. Isn't that interesting? But let's see what happens if I, um, and also I'm gonna point out one more thing on this fox, is notice in here, you can see some cracks in the fur, a little hint of kind of fur getting longer in here. In this area, your fur texture, you're just seeing a few little lines and things, but all right in here, interesting enough, you're getting a little bit of these little cracks in the fur. Let's see what happens when you go to a gray wolf. The fur on the legs is shorter. So we'll actually see um, some definition of muscles and things in there. Um, on the body, the fur is long and the fur is actually in major patches. There are zones of fur that have a texture to them that um, is, is that we're going to want to pay a lot of attention to. Um, in the neck area here, this is zone one. So there's a, an area of fur coming in over the neck. There's another pad of hair that goes over the shoulder here. And then you see this little piece right here. There's a little triangle that comes out into the middle of the back. It's its own separate little pad of fur. If you imagine you're a raindrop and you fall on a running wolf, imagine you're a raindrop here and you land here, you are going to be kind of blown along in the wind here. And as you get here, you're starting to kind of curve down off the bottom. The reason we're taking this little raindrop journey is because the raindrop journey um, is going to also show you the direction, with a couple of exceptions, that the fur is going to go. So if I land on the side here, I'm still coming towards the back, but I'm flowing down a little bit more steeply, right, as my wolf is running along. So you see how the raindrop journey really kind of helps you figure out where you would go. If you're here on the flat back, you're gonna be going more flat back. Here on the side, starting to come down. On this side here, coming down like that. So I like to think of the direction that a raindrop would travel on if this animal is going really fast or was in a wind tunnel and that raindrop was getting blown. Right like that, okay? Couple of interesting 
Um, bonus things to notice about the wolf's fur. Um, so very shaggy in here. You get also in this area right here, behind the forearm, foreleg, there's long hairs in here with a different texture. And similarly, right in here in front of this leg, this is in the zone that as this leg is moving back and forth, this area would get rubbed. And it has long hair with a different texture. That's going to can often show up in your pictures as this leg is moving back and forth as it runs. Um, this area right in front here is going to get rubbed back and forth. The fur in here has a different texture. So it's not quite following this idea of the little travel of the raindrop. Let's also notice there's a big fringe of hair on the back side of the leg. Let's get closer. As we get closer, I want to point out something that's going to really help you be able to draw fur. At this, even at this distance, as I'm looking in here, I'm not seeing individual hairs. So these aren't individual hairs. These are clumps of hairs. If there was just an individual hair hanging down, it would be too thin for us to see. But we're seeing clumps of hairs. And look what, what happens when there's a clump of hair over here and a clump of hair over here. The space between them creates a V pointing into the body. This is going to end up being really important. So here is a V pointing into, so skinnier crack here, the crack between these clumps of fur is wider out there. Let's take a look right in here. Here is a clump of fur, here is a clump of fur, and notice that the space between them makes a V. You see the same thing here. When you get dense fur, when you get you know, uh, short fur, you don't see any of this. But when you get dense fur, don't think of starting to, I'm going to draw in all these hairs. The shadows between those clumps of hair are your dark parts. What you're going to be doing in just a moment is in these areas of deep, dense fur, you're going to be drawing and shading in the cracks between the clumps of fur, not drawing the hairs. If I get in here and I draw all these hairs, it will turn this light area black. But instead, I'm going to be drawing in these cracks going into it. If you get that idea, it's going to dramatically improve your ability to draw. Uh, uh, a long-haired critter. So down in this area here, you get longer fur. This wolf in summertime has a shorter coat, so we don't see it quite as dramatically in here. Right? But also this wolf in summertime is helping us sort of see these essential clumps of fur on the, the, the body of the animal. So here, we're going to have this neck zone, this neck clump of fur. And look at the, how the, the raindrop trick is working in terms of which direction the fur is going. Here is on the, the, the back here, here's the, the, this second clump of fur over the upper arm. And then on the very back, there's a little pad that comes right out there. Here we're going back to, uh, we want to notice these big cracks in the deep fur down here. Notice there's, it's sort of almost like this wolf has a hood. And there's a little depression right here. If we go back to this guy, you see that little depression there? All right, that right in here. So you're, this little shadow in here is actually telling you something functional about the anatomy. Then here's the big clump of fur over the shoulder, and there's that extra one in the middle of the small of the back. Deep fur in here, shag 
on the back edge of the thigh here. When you get down into the paws and lower legs, then you are not seeing the, um, those, those big, it's shorter fur. Also notice here that in this long hair, the elbow is right up here along the body wall, right? Elbows here, here's my knee in here. If I just make this, this a little bit shaggier like I do here, it looks like you're not so much seeing the knee sticking down. It feels like you're just getting this part sticking down. Little bit of me though. Take a look at those Vs of shadow coming up into the fur. We're gonna be using that. Take a look at these Vs here, right? That gives you the sense of deep fur. So when you want to draw deep fur, you're not drawing longer lines, you're drawing in the shadows between the clumps of fur. And even on a smaller scale, you see the same thing on the head. Um, notice that the shadows um, in here on the, um, as, this, as, as this critter has its sort of shaggy head here, here's a crack in the ear, it's a V, right? All the little micro cracks wider on the outside edge and then pointing in Here's a little V, gives you a sense of that shagginess. All right, so I'm now going to drop back to the, um, I'm gonna drop back to my drawing of, where is my zoom? Here is my zoom, ah, there we go. I'm gonna drop back to this I'm gonna add some fur to this wolf here. Um, and we're first gonna, actually I'm gonna just block in the body a little bit more, and then we're really gonna get into adding some fur texture on this body. Okay. If I, um, so to kind of draw along with me, and we're gonna draw just some uh, wolf features over the top of this, this first skeleton. Um, actually, I'm gonna do it down here on this one because it's a little bit lighter. All right, get this centered, there we go. So first I'm gonna put in an ear here, and the ear is going to come from uh, towards the, the back of the head here. I'm gonna zoom in. And so from this area here, I'm not gonna draw a heavy line on the bottom edge of it. The ear is going to come up. I'm gonna give it a flat little top and bring it back here. On the front edge of it, I'm gonna put in a little bit of a shadow. And I might have another ear poking out on the other side of the head. My fur on this is gonna come along the top of the head, drop down here, and there's cartilage in the front of the nose here. So my nose is actually going to come out further. Dogs have a little groove here on the side. My little nose. For my eye, um, I'm actually gonna draw a larger eye right up here, and then I'll put that down uh, on, on here. Here's what I want to think about for my, 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 my eye from the side. Um, the front edge of it is going to be curved. I have the back edge here. There's often a 
going back from the eye, sort of a, an Egyptian pharaoh-like mark. Um, up above the eye, there is a small raised pad. And here's the kind of critical bit, kind of coming down. So this, by the way, this is looking in this direction. Down this way, there's going to be a sort of uh, a, a sloping, sort of bulging out of, of fur. And I'll also see on the underside of the eye, the, 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 the same thing. So coming down from the eye, I'm going to have a little zone here that often uh, is light colored. Here's my pupil. Tear duct may be apparent in this area. So when I put that in here, I don't want to just draw an eye shape. I want to build it into the head. And that will fit that eye into the head and your head will look a lot better. From the front of the face here, I'm going to come down and back. I'm going to give this a little bit of a, um, the line a little bit of an, an accent where that mouth met, meets. I'm not going to bring it all the way back underneath the eye, so a little bit ahead of the eye. And There's a quick question about the pupil. Um, what shape is it? Oh, I also great, noticed that you did it high point. up on the eye as well. Um, so the, the, the pupil of the eye is different in different species. In the red fox, it's elliptical like a cat's. Um, but on a wolf, it is um, going to be a, a round pupil. Your dog, most of your, 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 your pet dogs are going to have a round pupil. Um, and from the direction that the, um, unless the dog really lifts its head up, in most cases, you're going to see the pupil closer to the top of the eye than the, than the bottom, unless it really has its snout raised up. Let's take a close look right here at the corner of this mouth, because there's a very doggy moment that you can get that will make your, this face look a lot more dog-like. Um, the muscles that attach around the mouth are attached by a strap of muscles called the zygomaticus that curves, goes back up here on the side of the head. And so the result of all of this is that you sometimes see just a little bit of a corner of the mouth, sort of this, this raised tissue around the corner of the mouth. And that, in a short-haired dog, you'll actually see a little bit of the evidence of the zygomaticus also kind of coming up on the side of the head. The whisker pad isn't all the way in here. It's just out here. It's out here in the front. All right. They have a large jaw muscle. And so there, you know, this, this head is starting to look a lot more doggy. A big part of that is having these eyes set in like that. It's gonna really make your, your, your nose. From the, on the nose from the side, you have the little um, a little crack, a little groove that goes in along the side of the eye, of the, uh, the nose. So that's what's going on there. It's sort of the bottom edge of it. I give it a little bit more of a punch and that suggests the little, the shadow underneath this edge there. Now, this is going to be a wolf. So it has a powerful neck. 
And that neck is covered with all of this fur. So the fur is going to go from back behind the ear down this way. And if I am drawing in fur texture, I can suggest that this is, is, is fluffy by making some inward facing arrows right in this area. A few little tick marks. This just kind of giving a suggestion that there are some places where this is gapping in some places. This is going to look a lot more effective than doing this. All right. And you don't want these to be evenly spaced. You want some big, some small. Think consistently inconsistent. On the back side of the head, I can, I, I, I like to watch, watch this motion. This, this is a, um, a trick that I learned by studying the drawings of William D. Barry, um, who's my favorite illustrator. Um, this is a, 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 a photograph, not a photograph, this is, look at this. Um, these are just some magnificent drawings of, uh, this, this comes from his book, I recommend it. It's a kid's book with, that he wrote and illustrated. Um, oh, you can't see it at that. Let me zoom out. So this is Buffalo Land. And um, it is all done with pencil and colored pencil. And look at these just incredible, incredible illustrations. Uh, that's that's colored pencil, gang. But I like to, to you know take this and just sort of take one of his drawings and I study like how are you making your marks? What are you doing? Let's take a close look at what's going on with some of these wolves. And we'll um, I've taken to calling these Bill Berry marks. Um, let's see. Here we go. So what what what's going on here is this little line is thicker towards the outside and gets skinnier towards the inside. What he's doing is he's pressing his pencil a little bit, gives it a little wiggle and flicks it this way. Normally when we think of drawing hair, you know that the hair, the hair has a follicle in here and it gets smaller out here. So you draw your hairs out this direction, right? So you're drawing your marks in the same direction that you know that those hairs grow. That gives you a mark that is um, lighter where you start and then, and then kind of goes out like it's an individual hair with a follicle. But no, what he's doing here with these Bill Berry marks is he's got little flicks that start broader and come into skinnier like a backwards facing V. Bow, bow, bow. Bill Berry marks, ladies and gentlemen. Um, look at this, this, this wonderful series. Like here is, um, you've got to get this book. Again, Buffalo Land. Um, <laughs> he has, you know, here's this, uh, this buffalo has died. It's uh, the wolves set on it and they chase the coyote away. And then the coyotes set on it and they chase the raven away. And then, ah. Uh, in the snow here, the ravens get to pick over the car. I mean, that's a, that's a spectacular, spectacular illustration. Love the way that this guy handles fur texture. All right, so I'm gonna make some Bill Berry marks as I do this. And that gives you just sort of a sense that there is this, this sort of this mane up here. Um, on the body here, I can follow along the line of the spine. I'm going to give it a sense that there are some here is a few little Bill Berry Mark flicks that I'm making there along the line of that back. Um, 
And now I want to put in a suggestion of some of these kind of uh, fur tracks. So I can do that here in the front. Um, and see how just adding in a few little bill berry marks in there turned that line into something that was shaggy. Right out here is my the edge of my leg. Make it a little bit shaggy. And um, the edges of, of these can also have, um, you know, some darker markings on them. And if that's the case, I can put those in. Um, I'm going to continue down here with this foreleg. I'm going to come down straight. I'm going to come down straight here. I can give a slight little suggestion of a muscle in here. Skinny, big, medium, small. And now for the toes, I'm going to draw the toes a little bit larger here. Essentially what I want is this kind of a shape. I want it to come down, have a sloping front, and then have a suggestion of it kind of curling back so it's not actually flat on the ground. There's a little bit of up. So I'm going to first do the toe that is closest to you. And then the next one. Um, wolves tend to have these big floppy feet. Also, uh, this is something I, I learned from studying Bill Berry drawings. Um, what he does is at this point here, there is there's an, an angle change. He puts a little bit of kind of where you get these sort of changes in angle right there, a little bit of lines kind of flicking back that helps people sort of see that uh, there's a there's a change in the slope of those that, that, that angle there. Now my body is going to be coming across here roughly across this area. Now you remember in this area, there was some deep and this area here, the raindrops generally are coming down and they're gonna be coming down this way. But in this area here and this area here, that's where I'm getting, uh, here we are. That's where I'm getting my deeper, my deeper fur. So I'm, I can first start with some nice Bill Berry marks in there. And then along the, um, the, the outside edge of that, I can just sort of suggest that there are some you know, cracks in that fur. Um, up here on the back, I've got this zone, this zone, and remember that bonus little pad that comes across the back here. I can suggest that. And I'm getting these pads of, of, of fur on my wolf. On the leg here, I can draw a line coming down, just a few little kind of tick marks into it suggest that there is, uh, that, it, that it's fur. Again, if I just have a line like that, it says this is an egg. Um, the minute I kind of do that over it, you go like, oh, no, sorry, my bad, it's fur. Um, 
this leg here has that shag back end here. It makes this whole leg fluffier. So um, kind of from, from back here on, you get this, this, this hind edge of the leg that is really shaggy. So if I, I want to also have sort of a suggestion of the, that, that kind of that rough fur down in there. Leg is wider, narrower. Could you center the drawing, please? Thank you. And then the um, detail on the feet, too, would be helpful. Was I off screen when I did that? Oh, no, just down below. Someone had a question about whether you're going to finish the front feet. Oh, I thought I had. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, let me just sort of zoom in on that foot there. I've just got a suggestion of of those, those toes, very much like bird feet. I don't want to have um, too much, if I kind of wail in too much detail down here, it's gonna just draw everybody's attention and say, look at this foot. So if I put much more detail in on my feet than I have on other parts, um, And the other toes would be kind of wrapped around the other way. So I'm, I just am going to draw these two toes, four toes on the ground here. Now, back here in the leg, I have that little gap where the tendon is coming up. And so I can put in that little bit. And the final thing I'm going to do is kind of come down here. My wolf gets a tail. And the, the wolf also, there's a little bit of a kind of a dark marking here on the tail. The back, the dorsal part of it, the, 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 the midline part of it is a little bit darker. And then there's a, a tip on it that is and on this surface coming up here. So with these these Bill Berry marks, I I'm able to to get a sense of shagginess. Uh, I'm going to zoom back. <clears throat> I can get a, a sense of shagginess. I can get, um, if you make little light ticks, right? it suggests that this is fur, but it's short. The minute I put in a big tick, it says, hey, this is deep fur. And so you can kind of modulate the, 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 the fur on your critter. Anytime you have a line that's just too, that feels just a little bit too, um, too, too straight without fur. You just put in. Could you center that part of the drawing? Thank you. Uh, we'll just give you a kind of a couple little ticks in there. And that's going to do a lot to sculpt to sculpt that part of your drawing. On top of this matrix, you can add color. Um, there's a bunch of different kind of, of color varieties of wolves. And, uh, but on top of a, a strong drawing, you then get your watercolor in on that and it's going to, 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 to to look good. I want this to tuck up just a little bit there. There we go. The wolf. 
And this one <laughs> only has two legs, so <laughs> makes it easier to draw. I'm going to bop back to this view here, and I just want to take a look at um, those wolves again. Jack, I'm just going to give you a time check. It's 12.54 right now. 12.54, great. Thank you so much. Um, I will probably save the kind of getting into uh, sort of a more of a close-up of the face, which isn't really the angle that you'd see anyway um, in a, um, from a, from a field sketch um, for, uh, we'll probably do that on Tuesday. Um, unless there are, are, are other questions. But just take a, take a moment to notice where you would put in Bill Berry marks. Notice those Vs, how you would suggest that texture. Do you want this to be light? You want this to be short fur. Those approaches give you um, they really give you a bag of tricks to be able to suggest and sculpt these kinds of forms. Let's turn this over um, to questions and see if there are uh, aspects of what we've been talking about here that people might, might want a little bit more clarification with, um, or maybe that's, there are parts that are giving you trouble and we can talk about those. Um, let's check the, the, the question box and we'll see if there are any kind of high percentage questions that have, have come in so far. Um, it looks like someone was asking about um, the bill, let's see, bill berry marks on only on the edges. Is it ever in the middle of the back leg? Ah, oh, great Let's question. The fur. Yeah. Hmm. Now let's check that out. Um, escape this. Right. Um, yes, yes. So you you can get you know like here. Um, if, if you have in here an area of, let me zoom on this. And refocus. There we are. Um, if I, I can kind of come up in here. And that gives you, you know, then that, that's putting some deep, uh, deeper sort of shag and, and fur into those parts. So it's not just, um, it's not just for, for the outline, I could also have, oops, I have to be careful about uh, not going off the screen. And let's also ask Bill Berry himself. Bill, what would you do? Well, I'm glad you asked. All right, take a look at this, let's zoom in even more. Right. This is this is a group of wolves who've descended on a very unhappy bison. And look at um, look at those marks um, right through here, right? And you can see, you know, those 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 marks. How they're um, he's doing the same thing, but on an, an interior form. And there, we'll go around here. Look at these wolves in waiting. Just magnificent, magnificent uh, understanding of form and how to suggest that with line. Um, I like these Bill Murray marks right here, right? Flicking up into this direction gives you that that sense of depth in fur um, 
Um, is there another question? Oh, oh also, just um, since we're here, just, just, just pause for a moment um, and look at what's going on around these eyes. You see the pad above the eye, below the eye? So that kind of fits the eye into the head. Whew, that's so nice, right? See the same thing going on right in there. That gives you the sense that the eye is attached into the planes of the skull. Nice Bill Berry marks on this chewing wolf here. These are great. I like how you're showing how you've learned how to um, master a technique by watching someone, observing and studying someone else's um, sketches. It's a good example for all of us that we can go oh, in and yeah. no, learn I feel, how to observe. Uh, like for, if, if you just were to sit down and take this illustration here and line for line copy it, there would be countless. I mean, look at, what is, what, look at what's happening with the Bill Berry marks right there. Look at what's, what's, what's going on. There's just so much to be learned right in that part of the picture. And then this whole thing, this whole drawing is done with two pencils, right? So that's a black pencil and a red brown pencil. And he gets this, this whole, if you are sensitive to um, kind of scenes of animals being eaten, then avert your eyes right now because this will be a very unhappy bison. But um, this whole thing, this is all done with two pencils. This whole thing here, two pencils to tell this whole story. Spectacular. So yeah, I will sit down with Bill Berry drawings and just work those um, to, to, to try to learn from it. Um, the, if you become, a, so I, I actually, I, I went to Alaska to go um, meet his, his, his widow. I talked to and interviewed a bunch of his students. Um, I have um, pottery that um, um, his, 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 his wife made. Um, I'm, I'm a, a full-on uh, Bill Berry uh, groupie. If you want to kind of dig deep into his stuff, this book here, this is Alaskan Field Sketches by William D. Berry, Alaskan Field Sketches, um, is page after page of his, his field notes. You get to look into all of his field notes. It is so much fun. And any one of these, any one of these sketches, you could zoom in on it. and just learn volumes about kind of best practices with, with your pencil. Look at how he is sculpting the form of that moose. You, could, you can pat that moose. You know where its body is turning just because of those lines. So um, if you are, want to give yourself a, um, a sort of a, a a, a COVID present, you, you owe yourself a copy of Alaskan Field Sketches by William D. Berry. These are these tiny little studies of, you're thinking like, oh wow, that's a nice, nice wolf drawing. Um, these are done just, a, printed just about life size. Um, look at how big those are. Isn't that crazy? You didn't expect the pencil to be that big. Um, I love these little guys running up the hill here. Oh, 
look at how, I mean, how do you handle just sort of tangle of branches? Oh, and it's just, it's masterful. Um, so I, uh, all my, when pre preparing for this talk, I uh, sat down and um, I studied uh, a bunch of Bill Berry's drawings again and learned, learned new things. The more that I do that, the better I get. It's all pencil miles, folks. It's, it, we, we get better by doing things again and again and again. But you also, so the, the research that shows that it is about how we develop skills talks about something called deliberate practice. So deliberate practice is not actually just doing the same thing again and again and again, but it's really critically looking at what has gone before, what are the strengths, oh, that worked, do that again on purpose. That part, not so much. Why is it? Okay, I need to tweak that part. Um, having a coach, you know, and this, this, is, this is coaching. So when you're looking through somebody's book like that, that is coaching. That is coaching you to notice um, different sorts of things. To study with different teachers and to, to learn ideas from them about what works and what, what doesn't work. So, um, you know, Serena Williams has a tennis coach and works regularly with her tennis coach. She's really, 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 really good at tennis and she practices all the, the time. But the, the coaching helps you kind of get to where you want to be in a more direct line. And it doesn't turn you into a clone of somebody else. So if you work intensively with one person, you're still going to be different. But, and then the minute you start taking ideas anywhere, you know, go on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page. There's a lot of cool stuff popping up there right now. Um, and look for pages that inspire you and then look at them from the, the point of view, like what is something that you are doing that I can do? Um, and, or like, how are you handling that kind of line? It's okay to copy these things. Like there's like, wow, I love how you did that badger. You just pop that thing out. All right, I'm gonna copy your badger technique and do yourself a little doodle trying to do that. Like, oh, and that person is then coming out of the screen and sitting next to you and guiding your hand. They're gonna teach you something different that you, you, you didn't know before. It, so, so pencil miles, and we're gonna, we're gonna tweak that to the idea of deliberate practice. So really intentionally kind of going into like, that's challenging for me, why is that? Like, where can I, and, and, and being thoughtful about it. If you find that the idea of deliberate practice then starts to like clench you up and you start thinking like, oh no, I have to make everything purpose. That's not what deliberate, pra deliberate practice is not saying you need to be perfect and beat yourself up about any drawing that didn't go well. It means being able to, in a gentle, loving way, be able to look at something that you did and say, that part, yes, do that again. That part, that part was challenging me. That, that, oh, and maybe this is why. Maybe I try that different the next time. The, the power of the idea of yet is really, really important here. Um, so if you haven't done so, go online and watch some Brene Brown lectures. Um, and she will give you some thoughts and ideas. Again, the name is Brene Brown. Um, thoughts and ideas about, uh, about being more kind of gentle and accepting of your, your, yourself, and at the same time, pushing yourself forward in a really constructive way. Um, the idea of you, like you gotta be what we're not, that would clench anybody up. Deliberate practice is being able to look at what you've done in a way that will help you take what you're doing to the next step. And it'll make your nature journaling a lot more fun. I hope that this workshop was helpful for all of you out there. Um, between now and our, and our next workshop, I wanna encourage everybody to just keep those, those pencils going. Play with it, play with some of these ideas, find photographs online, draw your dog. Um, and, and, and study where you see lines that are working for you. Copy those ideas. And again, it's not gonna make you a clone of anybody. It's gonna, you're gonna come out with a new set of tricks. 
if it's possible for you to make a donation to support me at this time, I greatly appreciate that. If that doesn't work for your family, there are lots of ways in our community right now to, to spread really positive, really helpful things um, forward. Donating blood is really, really important right now. Um, helping your neighbors. Um, there's, a, there's an elderly person who lives down the block and um, she shouldn't be going out on her own to the grocery store. That's where you come in. And so just let's look for ways of taking care of each other. Um, also consider how you can support people internationally. Um, I was just looking in the refrigerator the other day and I thought to myself, wow, there's not very much here. And then I realized, no, there's tons of stuff here. I'm living in North America. This is, this is a bounty. There are people right now in, in, in refugee camps. Perhaps finding ways of supporting other people um, uh, right now, if, there, if you do have any funds for charitable donations, the world really needs it right now. Stay kind, do your best, do good works, share beauty, and try to get yourself out into nature. It'll find, you'll find that a lot of the tension that you feel, it's just because I'm sitting in my apartment. If there's any way to get yourself into a natural place, um, take advantage of those as those opportunities open up. Thank you all. And I look forward to sketching with you again.